So welcome, um, Dharma teachers and friends, to our second session of our retreat. Um, and now um, our BGR chair, Venbo Bikubodi, will um, take over as the host of this session. And Bante, okay. Okay. welcome. OK, so I welcome everybody back to our New Year's retreat on anchoring our lives in the Dharma. And for this afternoon's session, I'm very delighted to welcome Bhante Buddharakita, who is a Buddhist monk from Uganda. There are two Buddhist monks that I know. Whenever I make contact with them, the question I ask them is always, what continent are you on right now? <laughs> 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 One of these was Bhante, the Sri Lankan monk Bhante Gunaratna, but he's now 95 years old, so he doesn't travel around the world so much anymore. <laughs> but the other one is Bhante Buddharakita, <laughs> who I just learned from speaking to him, had been, let's see, in Thailand, then to Singapore, then to Uganda, and now he's back in the United States, I think, to start a period of teaching at the Union Theological Seminary in New York City. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So Bhante Buddharakita had been ordained as a Buddhist monk in 2002 at the Tathagata Meditation Center in San mm -hmm. Jose by the most venerable Usilananda, who was one of the first Burmese Buddhist monks to settle in the United States. And after undergoing his training in California and also at the Bhavana Society in West Virginia with Bhante Gunaratna, <laughs> Bhante Buddharakita went back to his native country, Uganda, and there he established the Uganda Buddhist Center, which is probably the only Buddhist center in Uganda. Yes. And Bhante is also a longtime member of BGR's Council of Advisors. And apart from teaching meditation in Africa and truly worldwide, <laughs> he is also teaching Buddhism and interreligious engagement now at the Union Theological Seminary in New York. He has published a book called Planting Dharma Seeds, The Emergence of Buddhism in Africa, which tells the story of his own work in Africa, establishing Buddhism there. Okay, and so we're very happy again to welcome Bhante Buddha Rakita to join us for this New Year's program. Thank you very much, Bhante Buddha, for your yeah. beautiful introduction. And <laughs> it's always uh, uh, amazing to be a part of a big year. And thank you very much for requesting me to join you on this program. And uh, I would like to, uh, to start with a short meditation to anchor ourselves in the Dhamma. And after that, uh, I will share my experience of uh, anchoring my life or our life in a Dhamma in Uganda. So let's maybe meditate for about 10 minutes. The proof of the pudding is the eating. So let's, <laughs> anchor, ourselves. let's anchor ourselves. 10 minutes. Settle back in the present moment. Follow the same uh, instru meditation instruction Bante Body gave in this morning. You can use the breath as your anchor. because the breath is there all the time. Even if you get lost in the past and future, the tourist can be, you can come back to the breath. It reminds us of the present moment. It there, it's there all the time. Whether it's breathing in or breathing out, it's there all the time. It's a safe place to be. And then from that place of centeredness and grounded, you can observe different sensations, feelings, emotions, and any mind states that arise in a present moment.
See if you can sustain your tension from the beginning of in breath to the end of it. Begin beginning of out breath to the end of it. using the breath as our anchor or how, as our home base. We can abide in the present moment. Sometimes thoughts arises that takes away our awareness from the present moment, from our anchor. We can be aware of the thoughts. We can expand our awareness to embrace and include thoughts that arises, maybe thinking in present moments, maybe thoughts of the past, we can be aware of remembering thoughts of the future, we can be aware of planning, and then come back to our anchor, to our breath. In kindness and gentleness, we can always come back to the breath. We begin over. And if you cannot come back to the breath, you can come back to the body. You can use the body as our anchor also. Becoming aware of the body sitting here with its, with its touch sensations, touch points, whatever the body is contacting, where you're sitting, you can be aware of the sensations around these touch points. And then after that, you reconnect to the breath. Again, uncalling yourself. Maybe it's the mind wandering. Or it's the emotion arising, delight, calmness. Again, the principle is the same. Be aware of whatever is arising in the present moment, whenever it becomes permanent.
Before we end our meditation, please reflect along these lines. May I be well, happy and peaceful. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May I be free from suffering and its causes. May all beings be free from suffering and its causes. Tupamaya sabesam satanam suko kamato pasitwa kamato metta sabbasate subhavaye. Having seen that all beings like oneself have a desire for happiness, one methodically develops love and kindness for all beings. Sanadu, sanadu, sanadu. This is the end of our meditation session for 10 minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, for then the next session, uh, I would like to share with you uh, our Buddhist center, how it was established, and the when, and uh, some of the challenges that uh, I faced when establishing the center. Yes, I will actually also share the PowerPoint. Let me first do that. Oh, oh. Let me see if I can share power, the PowerPoint. Uh, once I can do that, that I think will be very good if we share this, the PowerPoint. Uh, let me see. Yes, I think this is it. Share, share the PowerPoint. Oh, yes, it worked. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Yes, I think it's going to work. We have a problem. Microsoft Word was closed. We apologize for inconvenience. Hmm. Let's see. It seems that it's not uh, working. Let me see. A point. Try it, try it again. I try, I, I try again. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, yes. That's it. That's yeah. it. It's there. It's in there. Okay. So then if I say play. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Wonderful. So this is today's uh, sharing is the background of Uganda Boot Center and UBS pro programs and practices, our compassion in action events and festivals at Uganda Boot Center. Okay, so this is uh, our mission for the Uganda Boot Center, vision mission. So this is our vision, peace for all. Uh, the reason why I chose that vision is because when I was uh, in Uganda, there was many wars during Idi Amin, a lot of coup d'etats, and uh, there was a war when I was growing up, and I saw there was there was a missing piece. <laughs> there was, it was peace everywhere. There was conflict, <laughs> and I saw many people were dying and suffering. So I said, "Let me really bring uh, some peace in the country uh, through uh, the, the teaching of the Buddha." And this became our mission to preserve and disseminate the original teaching of the Buddha, uh, spread Buddhist culture of peace within the context of African culture and to serve as a center for Buddhist studies, meditation practice, and Buddhist research in Uganda. So this is really something that I love to do. Uh, being the founder, I first encountered Buddhism when I was in India in 1990, while I was studying in India. And I then, as Bant already has made this introduction, uh, so I don't need to go through that. You already made it, my introduction. But I would like to tell you, uh, when I went in India in 1990, actually, I went to study business. And uh, it was amazing that this coincided with the meeting monks from Thailand who had come to study in India, English. <laughs> so when I met them, we became good friends. They took me to the temple for the first time. They told me about Buddhism. 
but they don't, they didn't tell me to convert to Buddhism. Mm -hmm. They just told me about their religion, and I didn't know that Buddhism was a religion. And uh, when I asked you in who's the founder of religion, they told me about the Buddha. I didn't know who's the Buddha in 1990. So yeah, then uh, they told me about the Buddha, and uh, I said, okay, I remember actually studying about uh, a person called Gautama. Gautama, uh, that came up in our history class in Uganda. But uh, I didn't know it's called Gotama Buddha. I knew the word Gotama though. So uh, that was uh, my first introduction to Buddhism. Uh, just seeing the statue and monks. So then uh, I got interested in Buddhism. So uh, teaching all Buddhism in the mobile temple. So now, how did we go? To, how did you go to this? So now, when I was in India. In 1990, uh, these monks left from from India to Thailand, and there was no monks uh, for the, during holidays. But I heard that there are monks in Thailand as, uh, and the other countries, but I could not go to Thailand. So they told me there's one monk in Dharamsala. It's called the His Own is the Dalai Lama. So uh, I decided to after my exams, I went to Dharamsala. Uh, to see this monk, they told me. I didn't know that he was a very famous monk, actually. They just told me there's a monk <laughs> in Dalamsala in Northern India. So I just, went, I just went and I expected to see him. They said, no way. It, it takes time to meet him. And uh, you have to fill forms, put your passport, and wait until uh, there is a public audience. Meantime, I saw other monks around, the Tibetan monks. And I waited to see the monk. They told me that I should meet. So finally, I met him. We shook hands. We shook hands, and the, it was wonderful to be in the presence of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. After that, I really uh, started attending uh, well, kind of meetings, uh, youth, Buddhist youth in India, and uh, get to know more about Buddhism. I got interested in Buddhism. I, I really converted to Buddhism uh, by that time. And in 1994, I did, I did a retreat. Uh, first introduction meditation retreat. And then I, I, I again I asked his owners, the Dalai Lama, that uh, I would like to start Buddhism uh, centers in, in Africa. And uh, I would like to get some blessing. So he really actually scheduled for, uh, for, to bless me. And finally, I knew that I would start, establish Buddhism in Uganda. But that's 1994. I was not even a monk. So but later on, uh, his own is, uh, I remember how his own is advised me to get friends. And, and uh, I decided to get friends uh, who are Buddhist slowly but slowly. And uh, of course, uh, long story short, I ended up in the United States uh, meditating in 1999 for three months, getting more friends like Joseph, Sean, Schalzberg. And uh, knowing Bantaji, because Bantaji came actually at the center where I was, where I was uh, working there as a, a layman in 2000, and I uh, volunteered to be his uh, assistant. And we walked with Bantaji Gunaratana, and they say, hey, come and visit me at Bhavana Society. I was a layman. <laughs> so later on, I say, wow. What, what if I became a monk, actually? So then I decided to become a monk after working at IMS and uh, went to San Jose, California, and I then as a monk. So that's why you see me in robes, these robes. And uh, now when I became a monk, that was 2002, uh, I decided to shift the monastery from San Jose to, to Bavana Society because uh, I, 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 I cannot eat red meat, and they are serving red meat. So I, I moved into Bhavana Society, and uh, I was trained by Bante Gunaratana. And after two years of training, I decided to go back to Uganda. That's exactly two years. I was a monk for two years when, when you see me like that, like in this picture. So this is my Amzo and this is a tent. I decided to go to Uganda. Uh, to establish um, the Uganda Boot Center. No training at how to do it, but I say I'm going. I'm going home. I'm, not, I'm going to leave Bavana Society in West Virginia and go home. 
and this is the first disciples I had. Uh, these are my cousin, nephews, my mother's here. Uh, the first five disciples are relatives. So now uh, this was a challenge. The first challenge I faced was actually this, this mobile temple was known to waterproof. So it would rain and it, it, it got wet. So sometime I would leave at 3 a.m. and go out of this tent because there was no temple in Uganda. This is the only temple in Uganda. <laughs> so uh, that was my first challenge, but uh, I decided to sometime um, put it under the tree, as you see, sometime under the tree, and later on, of course, I put it under shade. Uh, this uh, it was a, a, a most challenging time for me because uh, I, could, I had to go for arms round, look for food, and people wanted to buy my arms ball. They said, wow, this is a drum. Sometimes they mistake it for a basket, actually. They say, how much are you selling? So and I, back then, I had only one, actually. Only one. This arms ball was the only one in Uganda. <laughs> So they say, please, this is so beautiful. So sell this to, to me. Uh, that's what they were saying. But I was looking for food. I said, I'm looking for food. Uh, Sometimes I would fail to get food. And then I, 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 sometime I go hungry. And then the next day I decided to go to a Thai restaurant and get some food. Sometimes uh, one, some of the devotees were saying, OK, we'll give you the Ugandan one. The, the Ugandan people say, we'll give you food. But you're from USA, you are rich. Why are you looking for food from us? I said, no, I'm a monk. <laughs> so then I was doing some time uh, walking meditation uh, around my, my temple here, uh, mobile, mobile temple. I would just keep on walking back and forth, walk and back and forth. They, they always came to me, are you looking for something? So I, I told them I'm, I'm doing walking meditation. So I was really uh, kind of, uh, disturbed because every time I want to do something, it's always something arose, you know, that really challenges me. I could not do walking meditation because people are bothering me all the time. <laughs> then uh, sometimes the, my, my tempo would actually get wet and I suspend it uh, so that it gets dry. This part, I would just lift it off the ground so that it gets dry. Then they say, oh, you, you monk, you have special power. You are, you, you are levitating. How can you stay in a tent that, that doesn't touch the ground, you know? So it was really uh, amazing experience the first time. All right, so then later on after that, we actually, uh, uh, of course, that we established the center. Uh, then, of course, before we came to that center like this, we, had, we bought a land and we had open space. Uh, where we actually meditate in open space. You, uh, I think that picture will come later on. It might be there. But later on, we build a center like this, the Uganda Buddhist Temple, where we have novice monks, we have uh, uh, children. Some of these children belong to the school that BGR is supporting. And uh, the orphanage, we have sometimes volunteers coming, like it's a volunteer from Germany. Yes, so uh, later on, actually, we established a temple, but let's go through uh, some of the things um, so that you get familiar with the Uganda Boot Center activities, what we are doing now. Uh, as, as we set up the center, you're going to see some other activities that kept on expanding uh, after we got really uh, anchored in a dhamma. <laughs> so then uh, we, we look at some monks there. We have a, a full ordained monk, it's called Sangarakta. We have novice monks monks and we have an agarika some from time to time. So we, our center uh, really, uh, we do novice ordination. And uh, of course we have some kind of festival ceremonies as we are going to see. All right, let's see. In come to thousand, to, to come to thousand eight, uh, my mother got interested in what I'm doing. Of course, she was already a Buddhist, uh, after two weeks of my, um, my arrival in Uganda in 2005, she got, after two weeks exactly, she told me that she's interested to follow the religion I'm, fo I'm following. I said, why? I say, you know, this is very, uh, I like the Buddha statue. And I say, well, uh, these are the rules you have to follow when you become a Buddhist. 
And then she asked me what are the rules. I, I explained five precepts. I say, okay, abstain from killing, abstain from taking what's not given, all the five precepts. She said, I'm already keeping them. <laughs> so this is easy. So she became a, a, a Buddhist, but of course, to become a nun, and she, I had to tell her exactly some of the precepts she has to take uh, additionally. And uh, um, uh, this is uh, like a Burmese tradition, to become a nun in Burmese tradition. I told her that you, you are not going to be eating afternoon. <laughs> she said, well, uh, the, I told her that, are you going to manage this uh, rule of not eating afternoon? She said that you are my son and you don't eat afternoon, but I'm your mother, <laughs> so I can do it. So then she uh, asked me to ordain her as a, a nun. So there she became a Burmese nun. And, uh, I mean, a, a, a Buddhist nun in Burmese robes. She's still a nun there, and uh, she's the only one, but from time to time, I uh, ordain nuns, uh, the young ones, and uh, of course they have to disrupt and uh, go to school, but my intention in the future is to make sure that I provide them space, just like the, we have monks, novice monks at the temple. So this is some uh, one of my tasks in the future, to have more novice nuns also at the temple, but at least she's there. And now, oh, this is an ordination ceremony of 12 novice monks. We do normally this uh, uh, Vesak day, sometimes we do it during Katina day. So these one are uh, ordained and uh, we have about 17 of them now at the Uganda Buddhist Center. So this is uh, of course uh, one monk, Sangrakita. We have many Rakitas in Uganda. And I start asking them, okay, uh, now I'm going to send you to other African countries. Which African country do you want to go? Then they will say Kenya Rakita, another one, uh, Nigeria Rakita. So another one, <laughs> Egypt Rakita, Rwanda Rakita. <laughs> so really actually it's so beautiful to see that emerging in Uganda. So whenever you hear the word Rakita, like Sanga Rakita, all this, you know that that's a, uh, something that uh, is coming up in it from Uganda. And now, these are already they are then, you know, then monks that look like this, but I can't wait to see this in the future when I see all uh, newly ordained nuns uh, in their robes like that. I know I have already got the robes from Burma. It will happen. I've already ordained actually temporarily before. Three of them I ordained temporary nuns ordination. I've done that before. So now we have uh, programs like uh, outreach programs where we really engage the Christian uh, like fathers and really they are interested in meditation. These are lecturers. Some of them are lecturers at the university. They are very senior Christian nuns. Uh, really, even up to now, there's a university closer to the Buddhist temple. It's called University of Kisubi. I go to teach there. The Catholic priests and nuns are very interested in mindfulness. This was the retreat that I did, this international retreat that uh, we, we engage Catholic nuns and monks. So they always ask me, like this one, though he passed away during COVID time, but he was a, a priest and he wanted even to get the diploma in Buddhist studies. And he said, I'd like to really help you to really build even a Buddhist institutions, though I cannot become a Buddhist monk, but I'm going to still be a, a father as I am. That's what he said, but I'd like to support you. So it's just amazing to see the Dhamma, uh, how it works in these countries. So then uh, we have other programs like education program, health and medical care, what hygiene and sanitation, hunger relief programs, economic empowerment. I'm going to explain you one by one uh, as we, we see this. So the first education program is educate, uh, like UBCP's preschool. This is a preschool, this is a kindergarten providing all education, child edu uh, development education to children around the center. The preschool will be have only 12 children enrolled in top class this year. And this is being supported by BGR. Um, yeah, this is the one class of 12 children supported by BGR. So we are eternally grateful to BGR. So I go from time to time to teach them mindfulness. Yes, uh, so you can see 
uh, here, but uh, later on we have sessions of mindfulness here. I'm interacting with them. And, and this is a wonderful to teach mindfulness when children are still young like this. They, they are very peaceful actually because of this mindfulness training. Of course, they do the, also the national curriculum uh, of Uganda, but really part of it is to teach them mindfulness also. That's education programs. Here we inculcate, uh, like we encourage these children to be aware of the environment. Uh, here they are planting a mango tree uh, at the Uganda Board Center. So from time to time, we, we ask them to clean the place and uh, really uh, to be, to have what we call environmental consciousness. So this is part of the, uh, the program that we do in our P school. Then we have also Buddhist primary school. Uh, this is the, the first and the only Buddhist founded primary school providing mindfulness-based education apart from the Uganda national curriculum. Uh, currently we have 48 pupils uh, and out of these 48 kids, 17 of them are novice monks actually living at the temple. So this year we are opening up to really having a full-fledged Buddhist primary school. We expect to have uh, 84 children like each stream, each class, we, we want to keep like 12 children. So 12 times seven, that means uh, eight or four children. So this is going to happen this year. Last year, we had only four classes, but we want to really uh, expand it this year. So this is uh, some of the pupils in the British primary school posing for photo on a newly constructed building. This is the primary one, primary five, six and seven. This is a, a new block that where they're going to study this year uh, up to primary seven. So we have a mixture of girls, lay, and they are lay children, and then novice monks. So our school is mixed. Uh, then this is uh, all novice monks and the lay children. And then once they train enough, we actually ordain them. So this is like our nursery. So as soon as we find out they can behave very well, then we upgrade them and they ordain as novice monks. So that's education program. Uh, of course, we, we offer computer skills, not only to novice monks, but also to, to the children from the village, uh, like um, even preschool and people from the community. Uh, we, we offer them the skills so that they can get better jobs. We have already done uh, like uh, a course for three months where they, we given gave them certificate after completing the course at the Uganda Boot Center. So this is like a computer lab of 14 computers donated from, from Singapore, and it's uh, helping us to really uh, help the people around our community. All right, so this is uh, there's another project we have, it's called Public Health and Medical Center. So the center opened last year is called Buddha Medical Center. We opened it here around Visak Day. This was an outcome of uh, uh, something in the community that, that was emerging. So the, from the community, uh, people could not afford to go to, to the uh, hospitals. And if in our community, uh, children, uh, especially from the school, were getting sick, malaria. And uh, it was taking us a long time to, uh, to treat them, uh, to take them to the medical centers, other medical centers. And then it was expensive time consuming, and also it was really a, a long distance. So we established this medical center, which is actually near the, the temple so that we can treat the community and the children. So this is, uh, of course, it serves the community and the children by teaching them pain relief and self-healing techniques. So we, from time to time, we, we invite doctors from other countries who can teach uh, people there some kind of um, health education, but really uh, it's really serving us very well be, uh, because we have a large number of children uh, at the Uganda Boot Center. So then uh, uh, this is Dr. Lee Young, a, visit, a volunteer, and uh, helping to take blood pressure and all these things to the community, from the community. And the, around the Christmas time, we had a doctor again from Los Angeles who really actually was even giving injections to the public, uh, so it's really uh, serving us very well. Again, this was in the spirit of compassion, you know, compassion in action to help people who are suffering, and then we can relieve the suffering from 
uh, from their lives. Okay, then we have another project called Water Hygiene and Sanitation that started in 2008. Uh, when I, I started the temple in 2005, there was lack of water. That was a big challenge. Though we are near the Lake Victoria, but water was very dirty, not clean at all. So it was not drinkable. So in 2008, we decided, uh, we approached one Malaysian uh, who was in Uganda uh, and working in Uganda. And then he really accepted this uh, proposal to have borehole water well uh, drilled at the Uganda Board Center. So then uh, this helped us to get clean water, but also help the community. So as you see borehole, you call them water wells, but in Uganda, we call them boreholes. So uh, this is the, uh, we collaborate with the different organization overseas. At the moment, we have drilled 30 boreholes around Uganda. Like every road that leaves Kampala going to another country like Sudan, Kenya, Tanzania, we have boreholes on that road. And this is our extension of compassion in action because we know uh, water is very important in, the people, in people's life. And we go to, and search in those areas. We found out sometimes people walk two miles, sometimes three miles to get clean water. So then after our search and found out the need for water points there or a borehole, then we drill it. So this is one of our major projects also to provide clean water in Uganda. And again, that emerged uh, from the challenges we faced and uh, we faced big challenges in rural areas in Uganda. And uh, we, we carry that message of compassion in action and uh, many people appreciate wherever I go to these places, they say, wow, you really have really uh, supported us and you have given this water to us. We like Buddhism. Many people have really supported these projects. Some of, uh, uh, um, some of the people who supported this project might be even listening uh, as I'm talking, but we are very grateful to all those people who have supported us. So we see this, some of the beneficial have been local schools also. We give them to local schools. We prefer schools because we find our schools have 450 children. And once you give them a bowl of hope, that's a big difference you're making in their life. Instead of collecting water, uh, spending one hour collecting water, and they cannot study, that means they have, when you give them water, they have more time to focus on their studies. And of course, this normally this water they collect, though they travel like one hour, uh, it's just like not clean water, and they, and they probably can even get a bit hazier, this waterborne diseases. But really providing water to school, really you can really change a lot of, uh, you can make a difference in, people, in people's life. Like for instance, uh, around the temple, we have given three boreholes to three schools. And uh, all together, these schools, like 1,000 people, uh, children, like 1,000 children can get clean water in these schools. So that means on every day around the temple, like 1,000 people benefit from clean water. So this brings me joy to see that there's a, an action of compassion right there in action. So then we look at, uh, we name them uh, names like this. But of course, we are here to put the signpost. Then people will ask, the, what's meta? Then we, that would be a teaching right there. <laughs> then Karuna, like that, we give them Buddhist names. And Mudita, then Upeka. And then we would do, have Dana, like this for the school. This is a school near the, the Uganda Bud Center. This is an opening ceremony. You can see with my mother here. Sila. So we, we, we keep on putting these Buddhist themes so that once people really, uh, uh, we are going to put signposts uh, so that then we, 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 then people know what's Dana. They will ask, then what's Sila? And then we explain them. All right, so and then uh, we have another project called Compassion Hunger Relief. And uh, we normally do work to feed the hungry. And of course, being a partnership with the uh, Buddhist Global Relief. So from time to time we do this, we join from time to time especially when I'm in Uganda. And we really engage all the people in our community. You can see so many children behind us. So we've done that one. And that has brought more awareness of what we're doing 
at the Uganda Boot Center, which was not the, there before because I remember when I just started the center, people did have, had no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, Buddhism, what's Buddhism? Uh, they always ask like this, of course, many challenges came out because people didn't know what I was doing. They would uh, call me names, they would call me evil. The, they told me I would go to, to hell with my robes because they didn't know what I, I, I'm doing. But now I think things have changed. They know that, okay, Buddhism is another religion. And uh, though they, most of them don't want to, to enter Buddhism, but actually they're supporting. They are supporting by way of giving me their children, to ordain them. And we, uh, most of them also work with the temple as volunteers. But of course, uh, they continue to be in their religion, and that's okay for me. Uh, but they really participate in our programs, which is amazing. They are very supportive. Then uh, we have, uh, this is a Compassion Orphanage. Uh, again, this hunger relief program is sponsored by BJR, but 20 children here, they eat food and they all look healthy because we give them healthy meals. And this, uh, of course, some of these children actually attend our school. You can see their badge, Buddhist Peace School. So they also, we provide them education. Of course, Bijara provides food uh, when it comes to the primary school. What, what we did, we admitted some of these children to, uh, to our primary school. So they can have both accommodation and education on top of uh, providing uh, food as Bijara is doing. So really they are benefiting uh, from these programs and they're wonderful children now. Then uh, we have, uh, this is a, again, uh, compassion, um, our pro part of our project to give uh, what to call respond to relief uh, when there's a fire. In this case, there was fire that caught the whole island. Uh, I mean, the whole landing center. Uh, it's called landing sites. It's really, it burnt the whole, the whole landing site and all houses got um, erased by fire. So we got some uh, sponsor ship from uh, Suchi Foundation to really uh, help them. So that's how we distributed food, like 12 tons of food last year and to this landing site. It was amazing before I left to Uganda, I was just passing near the Entebbe town near this, where this happened. They said, oh, Buddha, 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 you help us a lot. So they were so happy to see me, actually. So this really, uh, uh, all these are volunteers, really carrying food and uh, helping this, uh, helping us to distribute the food. But people get so happy when they see what Buddhism is, uh, Buddhist, Uganda Buddhist Center is doing uh, to them, uh, really helping them to make a difference in their life. So we, we continue to do these kind of projects of hunger relief and from whenever we get support. Another project we do, uh, that was uh, like uh, maybe 2009. Uh, way back 2009, I knew that women needed some help. So we established what to call women. Yeah, that was 2009, long time ago, but we, estab we started 2018. So, but of course, all those years I knew that women can get some help, but there was no uh, sponsorship to do that. But later on in 2018, we start getting some people to support us. And now we started what we call uh, empowering women and young girls by skilling them in various sets of business and hand skills. So we got some kind of support by 14 sewing machines. And this one of the biggest one is really actually this one. So they learn the skills, they make uniform for the school, they get uh, skills and then they actually establish their own shops and they sell sh shoes they make and different clothes and they can earn a living and they can actually take their children to school. So really, I can see really what BJR is doing, <laughs> really making a difference in people's life, really. So for me, this has, is really, I've seen it happening from scratch that once women and young uh, girls really get the proper skills, then actually they can uh, 
uh, uh, they can solve their, some of his problem of lack of food. Because these children actually, these women were suffering because uh, around their husband had lost jobs. <laughs> they, are, they were not employed. Um, many circumstances happened that the husbands were not employed and then they could not get enough food and jobs and all that. But now they get the skill, they get the job. Actually, they get money. Even before I left, one woman asked, came and said, thank you very much, Venerable. Now I have a job. I can take my children to school. I can eat food. So the vision of the Banta body, I can see right here, really. Is. That's why I, I, I'm so happy to be associated with Bijara because what you're doing is something that I've tested in Uganda, working very well and helping people making the difference in their life. So these are something that what we do, we even actually, um, we, we pay for the teacher for six months to train them. And after that, then they can train themselves. So these are sewing machine we have. Different organization help us to buy these machines and then uh, we can help these young girls and women. So then we have, uh, of course, events that we celebrate, a Katina ceremonies. We have a, a big community, Sri Lankan community, as you see, the, the celebrated, is a celebrate Katina, uh, what that mark the end of Wasa and signify the interdependence nature of all sentient beings. So this is something that uh, really uh, uh, have educated some of the people around the community to see what are the Buddhist uh, culture so they get to participate like cooking food uh, for these events and the Sri, Lankan, the Sri Lankan community also join them so that they work hand in hand uh, to make this event very colorful. So that's something we do. And of course, future plans for Uganda Boot Center is to construct a Uganda Boot Secondary School, uh, build international center and construct accommodation for novice monks and nuns. So this is the artistic view of the proposed classroom block for the Buddhist secondary school, which will come after primary school because we have now primary school, then now the novice monk will finish um, within this year. And then the question is where are they going to go to go for the high school? So this challenge is there now, we need to really, uh, we haven't built it, this is an artistic impression. <laughs> we haven't built it, but that's the next project to really build it so that we can educate uh, uh, the, the people, the nuns um, who will, pray, will ordain and uh, no monks and lay children to really to see that the Dharma keep on growing on a continent because I see uh, the continent needs this kind of training uh, so that children learn properly the Dharma so that they can spread it uh, in the future uh, on, in the rest of the world. Then, uh, of course, this is a Buddhist proposed school, secondary school. The proposed secondary school will provide education, uh, Buddhist moral education, African philosophy of Ubuntu, mindfulness-based education, and compassion on top of the Ugandan national curriculum to the people who will graduate from this Buddhist primary school and high school. So the school is planned to integrate mindfulness, vocation skills, training the heart, the head, hands, health, and happiness, that's called the 5H. So this will be really the intellectual part of the training that's following the national curriculum. This, uh, this is very common, hands which skills, but the heart, which is heart-mind, this is where Buddhism comes in to, to learn mindfulness and meditation. And of course, health, that's why we have a medical center. Uh, now happiness, we will culminate into all this and uh, that's our philosophy education uh, mission to really educate people there. So this is the end of uh, my presentation. And I think I can stop sharing. And uh, really, uh, I'll stop sharing and then we go back. So now uh, this is uh, taking you to how I started to be a Buddhist monk, a Buddhist and Buddhist monk. Uh, taking it to when I went with the tent, start from scratch with Amsbo. And I've taken you how, uh, how we, I set up Uganda Boot Center. And of course, the challenges of, as usual, an organization, which is a, a non-profit organization, the always challenge is uh, 
uh, especially being isolated in Africa there, <laughs> is the uh, human resources really don't have enough staff, human, uh, human resources, because uh, people who are Buddhist, uh, they are not well trained in having human resources. And those who uh, have these human resources, they don't want to associate with us. So that becomes a challenge. Yes, but of course, we are surpassing that phase where we are starting to get more staff and volunteers coming at the Uganda Boot Center. As usual, it's a financial constraints because of COVID uh, that limited our, our people who help us, but still it's, uh, this is also, uh, we surmount it by a few people who can help us, but uh, uh, it's still a challenge. And I think one of the challenges I faced in Uganda, really, it was more of a social, how people perceive me. Always people perceive me as a witch. Every time they say, oh, this person is evil. <laughs> Every time they think I'm evil, but that's getting better <laughs> because people have listened to news, the newspaper, they write about me. And uh, of course, because of the these projects we're involved in, um, they're being captured by the media and people read about them and then they say, huh, Buddhism actually is a, a good religion. And uh, this is getting better and better. But the first years, like first five years, was very, very difficult because every time people were just afraid of me. Some people even used to run away from me. <laughs> as soon as they see me, they run away. So then sometimes even, even putting uh, my bottle of water, I would place it down like this and people think that I'm placing a bomb, you know. So really, like, uh, my arms was, was mistaken always by like a grenade, you know. They thought that I'm going to bomb them. So uh, the children run away. So many, many times children run away and say, oh, this man is going to eat us. You know, sometimes I put a robe and maybe, you know, when you put on a robe and your arm is covered. So people say, come on, same man with that one arm. And so they really, everything, everything that can possibly go wrong, go wrong. Even my boots, uh, uh, fun, you know, always people ask me, are you going to play table tennis? So they always get it, the, the, the fun, the boots fun, you know, the, the one which is round that we use for chanting. People always think that's like, uh, we use it to play table tennis or lawn tennis. So everything really can really possibly go wrong, went wrong. But up to now, they think this is, this is not robes. Uh, most of the time people say, well, where, where can I get this? This, this is a nice fashion. That when I <laughs> up to now, they say this is a fashion, you know? And the people say, well, where, where can I get it? I say, well, <laughs> you know what it means to get this robe. Yeah. You have to keep 200 and, and <laughs> 27 groups. And so we thought that this is your Nigerian. I thought this is, you're from Nigeria. So they don't know that I'm a monk most of the time. But of course, people will educate them. I tell them I'm a monk. I'm the first Buddhist monk in Uganda. We have a temple. Then uh, people always want to join us because they know. I think they have seen so many movies about Chinese movies. So most people in Uganda, they know Buddhism, but for Shaolin, Shaolin Master, Kung Fu, <laughs> something like that. So then every time I ask, they ask me, can I come to the temple? I'd like to learn martial arts. So that's the common attraction. And then we, of course, we started teaching yoga and martial arts so that children can come. Whenever we have those projects, children really come in large numbers, really. Mm -hmm. They want to learn martial arts for some reason, because that, those are the movies they saw about Buddhism. But of course, uh, most of the children now, they come to the temple, they like, when they see other novice monks, they also want to become novice monks. So the net mm -hmm. effect, we have so many children on a wait list who want to become novice monks. Later on, I ask the nuns, uh, the children uh, who come to the temple from the orphan, because every Sunday, all of them come to the temple. Then I asked the girls, do you like to be nuns like my mother? My mother was there and also the girls were there. I said, raise your hand if you want to become a novice nun. 
they, ra they raise their hand like this. So that means the future is also to really ordain novice nuns. So I've written a book, uh, Planted Dharma Seeds in Africa. I think you can read the book. There's not enough time to really talk about um, all my challenges and all this, but I think that's enough sharing. But you should tell you should tell the story when you brought the Buddha statue and installed it on the in the temple, in the center. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for reminding me. I, I went to Sri Lanka in 2004 and I brought a Buddha statue. Damaruan, my friend, bought a mm. statue in Kandy and uh, I brought it to Uganda. And uh, I, I, because it was so fragile, I covered it in robes. And then when I reached Bombay, they said, Where is the boarding pass for the child? They thought I'm, I was holding a child. <laughs> I said, so I said, no, this is a Buddha statue. I, I think I, I made a mistake of wrap, wrapping the Buddha statue in robes. And then in Bombay, they say, where is the boarding pass? Uh, then once I passed Bombay, finally arriving in Kenya, they asked me, uh, what's this? I said, this is a Buddha statue. They said, no, you're carrying voodoo. You know, this is voodoo, African voodoo. So well, finally, uh, I was stuck with it. But finally, they told me, OK, Please don't sell your God here, the, the Kenyan immigration. So then from Kenya, I, I came to Uganda. So this is another immigration, you know. They asked me, what's this? You know, I said, this is a Buddha statue. And they, let's look at it. They, they checked, they say, at that time, even it had cracked anyway, a little bit. So finally, it went through the immigration of Uganda. And then I took it to Buddha stat, uh, the, the Buddhist temple. Actually, that, that time we didn't have a temple, but we just actually rented a space. That's the first time I got to Uganda, I went with a Buddhist statue. We rented a space for it. We were paying $30, and it was just a small room to put the Buddha statue there. But later on, I could not even afford to pay $30 for, for renting the space. So finally, uh, we bought the land, and we used all the money to buy the land, and there was no place, there was no money to build a, 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 a temple. So we just built a temporary structure. I used to call it the smallest temple in the entire world, just to keep the Buddha statue. So I put, I installed the Buddha statue there, and then I left for USA. And then of course it, it was locked in and then a small structure to keep the Buddha statue. When I was in USA, after a few days, I got a call from my sister. No, they have vandalized the building. And I said, why? They told me, they, we, we don't know the reason. Then later on, I got the rumors that the reason why they broke into the temple that I built it for the Buddha is that they thought that I kidnapped the child. There's a child that I've kidnapped and they are very curious which child it was this because they, they could not come anywhere near that small temple. Then I had that there's rumors that spread uh, the, the president was coming in the area because the vice president was staying closer to our temple, about one kilometer. And before the president came, they sent all these soldiers a day before to clear the village to, to see what's really uh, uh, to, uh, for security reasons. And rumors had gone around the village that there is a new religion that, is, that captures children and sell the heads to United States. <laughs> So, and they're very cruel to the children, they kidnap, and there's at least one child now inside the building. The building, nobody is supposed to enter there because of course, as I told you, I didn't have money. I didn't give, I didn't build any space for any human being to be there. I just built enough space just for one person to, to put the Buddha statue. So uh, they told me, they, I mean, people came, broke into the door. They, they took beer all night until the next morning. So they, they, by the time I, I left for USA, I returned back to Uganda, they, actually the door was broken for the Buddha statue. And the Buddha statue, they had thrown a ventilation and it fell on its head. And it had actually uh, dented, they dented it. So now that was the Buddha statue from Kandy. It faced a lot of issues, but later on what happened, uh, I told the Thai people to make a Buddha statue, which was bronze. And now we have a bronze statue. I still have that Buddha statue from, from Kandy, which was given by Damaruan. But Bantabudi, you know, 
uh, Damarwan. He, he, yeah, he's the one who gave me that Buddha statue in Kandy in 2004, you know. He yeah. took me actually the place where I used to live at the Hermitage and all these places, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then he gave me the Buddha statue. Thank you for reminding me that's a Buddha statue. <laughs> it's still there, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we'll take a break now. Let, let me just take a look at the schedule. Yeah, there's a break and then a Q and A, which we'll share yeah. with Bam. And yeah. then we have a little. I think we have a little video about the project in U Uganda also. Let me just see. Yes, we have about forty-five minutes. I think we can divide it. Yeah. yeah. Lines. Yes. Okay, so let's see. I have four oh five now. You want to take five minute break? All right, five minutes okay. break and come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, that was quite an amazing presentation, I have to say. Really wonderful. All of that work you're doing in Uganda is just really very, very impressive. Thank you very much. It, it takes a super monk to do that, not an ordinary <laughs> monk. Thank you very much for your inspiration. A, a lot of skills, a lot of vision, a lot of energy and effort. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So we'll take a five minute break. So be back. Right. I have 405. So 410 on the East Coast. Right. 110 on the West Coast. Thank you.
Okay, I think we could show the little video. Yes. Um, I think Kim probably is in charge of that. Yes, Kim is in charge. Of this. <clears throat> uh, this is George. Kim asked George. me to present it. Okay. So I can share my screen. Yeah. There should be audio. Uh, George, would you like to share the sound, please? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Should be, I think you should go back to the beginning and with the audio on. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing sound. Let me see. Unmute. More. Share sound. My apologies. Yeah. Okay. Go back to the start from the beginning. Yes. Okay. Is this all right? Yeah, good now. Okay. Compassion Orphanage is actually a program. Uh, that's called uh, a Compassion Orphanage Hunger Relief Program that uh, provides food to orphans around this area where the temple is located. At the moment, uh, we are feeding them two meals a day, breakfast and lunch. <laughs> The <laughs> Thank you very much for your support in the past and especially the Buddhist Global Relief. I'm really eternally grateful for your support. Without you, uh, we will not start this Compassion Orphanage. When you give, you give long life, you give beauty, you give happiness, and you give strength. Those organizations around the world who wish to join uh, us and help us, uh, you are welcome to support us in this program. And the Buddha said that uh, anger is uh, the worst of all diseases. I appeal to all people around the world to really practice compassion in action by coming here to volunteer. The future prospects of this project is to see uh, the children who are participating in this program have a, a proper accommodation and can gain access to education. I wish you long life, those who are supporting us, beauty, good health, I wish you happiness and strength. Okay, that's very, very nice, very nice little video.
very, very moving, touching. Thank you. Uh, again, I just have to repeat what I said earlier, that it's quite amazing all of the projects that you've initiated. And it's really like breaking Buddhism into a new continent where it's hardly existed at all before. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody has questions that they want to address, to, especially to Bhante Buddha Rakita, or any questions based on my talk this morning, the way, probably the best way to pose the question is if you go to the bottom line of your Zoom screen, some screens will have the directly, you'll see the hand image, the image for raising the hand. If you don't see it, then you'll see another little box or another little icon called reactions. And if you click on that, you'll see the hand symbols there. And then you click the raise hand symbol. Bante? Yeah. Did someone already ask a question in, in the chat? Oh, what's, I, yeah, what's, okay. What's Ubuntu? I, I think I can answer that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, let me answer that. Uh, okay, so Ubuntu is a, uh, is a, an African concept, uh, actually throughout African countries, they have this concept, but it's more of a, a concept that we found out in third Africa by Bishop Desmond Tutu. Mm -hmm. Yes, it goes like this. You are because I am, I am because you are. So it shows the African philosophy of interconnectedness, interconnectionness, and interdependence. And for, for me as a person who learned Buddhism, I always try to find out the relationship between our African tradition and Buddhism. So we find the gem all this in Sanyuta Nikaya, where the Buddha was teaching, when this is, that is. Mm -hmm. When this is not, that is not. When this arises, that arises. When this ceases, that ceases. So now I would now use the same teachings mm -hmm. to expand it more. And then there will be an intersection between Buddhism and African philosophy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we call Ubuntu. In fact, it's amazing in, in Uganda, when you're behaving very well, you are very generous, you are very kind and or compassionate. We say that that person has the life of people, or uh, Ubuntu. <laughs> in other words, behaving like a person, not like, a, a, and not a person, you know? <laughs> so things that uh, when you lack compassion, which we see and more rams and, and also you are, you are killing, you are doing this. We don't, we don't really call that you are behaving like a person. So when you, you, you Ubuntu, we put for us in Uganda, in Uganda uh, uh, Ubuntu Blam, we add it Ubuntu Blam, not only Ubuntu, but we add another word Ubuntu Blam, means life. Ubuntu life. So in other words, all behaviors mm. or that showing you're interconnected, interconnected with other beings through the practices that of generous loving kindness, mm. humility, all those mm. practices. Once you really practice like this, we see that that person is behaving, is having the life of a person. Literally, that's what it means. But really this teaching is about uh, interconnection. You are because I am. Mm. I am because you are. That's the answer to your question. And we integrate it in our teaching at the school. Thank you very much for ask. I think it was Tim. I think Tim asked this question. Uh, yeah, Tim, I've answered your question now. Yeah. Okay, you. so I, I see some hand symbols up. So the first one I see is from Linda Hoju Strauss. I think she's in New Jersey. Is that correct? from student of Joan Huberich. Okay, so the way you uh, pose your question, you would click the unmute. You unmute yourself, then you could 
directly ask the question. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for this lovely beginning of the year re retreat, which comes just at the right time with the right set of messages for me anyway. I, uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to address you both, not so much with a question as an invitation to discussion, um, because what I'm curious about inspired by both the morning and the, the afternoon talks is how, how we, we as practitioners and travelers on the Bodhisattva path activate uh, imagination and creativity into that, that beautiful list of conscientious compassion and of launching in Africa, something so revolutionary. Mm. So yeah, just really an invitation because as, as you were speaking this morning, Bonte, I was thinking, hmm, creativity and imagination, does that fit into discernment or courage? Where do we where do we slot those those two uh, features of the of human activity that uh, we we need we need on the path? Yeah. Okay, that is a good question, and I think let me see if I still have that particular. No, I think I close it, and it's a little bit time consuming to try to open it again, but. This morning, when I spoke about discernment, I said that we have to have not only a critical discernment in the way that we sort of look into the underlying roots, the causes, the grounds for the problems that we face, but I think I said we also, as part of discernment, we also have to have a vision of alternatives, of a new way, say, to conduct our affairs of the world so that we create, instead of the way the world situations, structures, systems are uh, presently configured. Generally, it's in a way that, I'm sorry to say, but it benefits a few at the expense of many. So those in positions of power, of wealth, dominate the media, political systems, the economy, and configure them in such a way to serve their own advantage, either in rather um, explicit, open, naked, obscene ways, <laughs> or in subtle ways. Um, okay, so we, in contrast to that, we need alternative visions of ways to create what I would call a world that works for everyone. That should be the ideal that we are aspiring for. And there are various ways to envisage this. One way that I found very useful, I wonder if I could bring this up very quickly. This is something that originated from an economist in Britain. Hmm. No, since I wasn't expected that question, I don't have it, but it's, she calls it donut economics. If you do a Google search for donut economics, you'll find it. It's a diagram shaped like a donut in which she has on the inside the basic, what she calls the social foundations, which we have to establish that will enable everybody on this planet to thrive. That would include things like having access to sufficient food, clean water, a voice in our political systems, equal rights, justice, legal and social justice, and various other parameters. That's the inside of the donut. Then the outside of the donut, she has the environmental limits that we cannot overshoot in order to avoid ecological collapse. And that includes reducing carbon emissions, 
avoiding biodiversity loss, um, protecting natural land systems, ensuring that there's clean water sources, clean air, and so forth. So this would provide a kind of, in my view, a kind of vision, an aspirational vision towards which we should strive, that we should strive to embody, to incorporate within our social and political economic systems. And what we need to do, sort of the big challenge is to overcome the barriers that are put up by the, say, the corporate controlled media, economic structures, and so on, in order to bring that ide those ideals to the attention to the great numbers of people and to mobilize people to strive for those, to actualize those ideals. I think somebody just put something in the box. Let me see. Demikas has his hand up. Yeah, but just somebody put in a comment in relation to what I just said. She says, okay. when, when the children have enough to eat, a clean and bright environment and a sense of safety. I say when they have enough to eat, a clean environment and a sense of safety, their natural creativity and, Im and imagination can emerge and flourish. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so now then, this is Mark Damika. Um, so you would unmute yourself and then you could ask the question. Yeah, you have to unmute. Uh, okay, now you now you're open. Um, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I had a longer question based upon your earlier talk this morning, but it's not as important as my question. I think to Bonte, um Buddha Rakita, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yes, you're right. Thank you. What material aid directly can people assist with, aside from uh, the donation of money to the organization? So I saw children. I saw uh, people needing uh, things to do, painting supplies, um, coloring books, uh, anything silly and easy to ship. If there's anything in a computer world uh, that would be better sent than bought locally in Uganda. Is there anything we can do here to assist there uh, in a direct fashion. Because your programs are uh, mind blowing, beautiful, flowering. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Damika. <laughs> I remember that, that name very much. Well, uh, <laughs> Damika. What there's a Sri Lankan there called Damika. I love the name. So thank you very much uh, for your thoughts. Well, uh, Biku Bodhi gave that to me when I took refuge. So blame him. <laughs> thank you very much. It's a beautiful name. I really appreciate that. Yes, uh, th uh, really, uh, we need uh, all the kind of support that anyone can give. We have a medical center. We it's devoid of, uh, of whatever you, uh, equipment a medical center should have, really. It's, it, it doesn't have the equipment that are needed to make the medical center function very well. In, like even if we don't have a, a microscope, things that can really help us to screen the blood uh, in case somebody has malaria. There are different equipment that are needed for our laboratory in order to be able to handle those kind of uh, 
things that are handled in a typical laboratory uh, so that we can serve our community and our children. So right there, there's a lot of medical supplies that we need. And right. how, about, how about asthma medication? Sorry? Asthma. I have asthma. I have a breathing problem. So when I was in Cuba, right. uh, that was very much sought after for children. Ah, uh, I see. Are there discrete things that are legal to send? Um, I don't think I can do anything about uh, blood screening, but yeah. I can certainly send a box full of um, albuterol, you know, inhalers or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. if that's an issue. Yes, actually, uh, there are issues people have asthma. What I recommend that uh, uh, we, we exchange our emails uh, and, and then uh, you actually I keep in touch with you personally so that I get to really engage you in what is needed. Uh, given the amount of time we have, I think uh, the best way we can really uh, process this is to keep in touch. You have our email there, ugandabootcenter at gmail.com. I, oh. I do, Dante. Thank you. Yeah, then I, I can really communicate you specifically. I'm in New York here. I, we can, I can call you and then we can take it from there. Yeah, there are specific things. And we've got specific things from time to time from overseas, like all those computers. They, they needed to donate them, but uh, they send us money. It's cheaper to get in Uganda. Everything so, from shoes to books to... To crawl, yeah. to crawl. Many people have been, been bringing clothes from the United States. And very silly, what people would consider very silly things I leave behind when I travel. Yes. So that I, uh, I bring them on purpose to leave behind. So mm -hmm. even things to fix bicycles, uh, patch, oh. uh, you know, silly all, things. All, all of those things we need them, we've been touched. Um, Damika, thank you very much. <laughs> yes yeah initiate that uh, email please because i don't have your contacts so I, I, I'll, I'll send it i'll send it to the general thank you to the okay right thank you okay thank you very much okay i see a hand raise from shyamali shyamali okay now you unmute no still muted Something said. That's it, that's it. Bante Buddharakita, thank you very much for your program. It was wonderful. It was so beautiful. And we were very, very touched to see all the good work you're doing. I just want to find out whether you all have a, your, your plan to have any programs where uh, people are able to sponsor children, even as a family where we could write to them and the children can write to each other and uh, a sponsorship of that sort. Is there any plans for having something like that? Because some organizations do that. And that also might be another way of helping your um, you know, causes. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, there's a, pro a plan to do that because we have so many children and then we, have, we don't have enough support to pay for their school fees. Yes, especially those who are like not ordained by you know, people are, uh, really actually is, have supported from time to time the novice monks. But uh, in our community, the parents cannot afford to take their children to schools, they drop out. But then for us, we provide education at a subsidized uh, wow. school fees. So now, uh, again, uh, my friend, uh, give me your email. And then I can really communicate with you more in details how you can do this actually, because in that area, actually we need a lot of support so that children can go to school if they get individual sponsorship like that. Right, because that's something that uh, uh, we, are, we can connect with somebody. I think such programs will make things more um, meaningful as well. I mean, anyway, it's meaningful, but here when you, find out their needs and when they write to you about mm -hmm. their progress and all that, that would be really very, very um, satisfying. That's what I'm saying. So we would really like if you can, uh, if you organize a program like that, and then many, many people, even in this program may be willing to uh, sponsor a child or something like that. Right. 
Thank you very much for sharing that. How would I? How would I give me give you my email address? Can I send to Bikubodi or can I tell you now? You can get it now in the chat, and then I just write it now in the chat. So okay. those who want to share their idea, these things, I can just get your email. Right, right. I will do that. Yes. Thank you very much. I will go ahead and give you the. Right. Yes, I am sending it to Kim now. Uh, let's see, Kim, put the racket. Uh... I think, yes, I got it here and my... Kim, Kim yes. can send it to me. Kim. Yes, I sent it directly to you. Okay, thank and you. And my name is Shamali Vijayaratna. Okay. All yeah. right, thank yes. you very much. Terwan Sarnai. Terwan Sarnai. It's beautiful, no? Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't see any, does anybody else have any question? I don't see any hands raised or nothing in the chat box. So remember if anybody, okay, now I see a hand has come up. This is Tongvan Norink, Norinth. Okay. <laughs> I don't have question, but I want to share the effort that Pante Buddhahita had just said a while ago. It reminds me one of the monks in the Buddha's time. Uh, he was ordained as a Piku. He thought of his native land. So he went to the Buddha and asked for permission to leave for his native land. I believe his name is a Paranta. Mm -hmm. I don't remember his name actually. Yeah, it would be Sona Paranta Pisatera. Uh, because please correct me if I am wrong. Uh, what the Buddha said, Piku, those people are very ferocious. They may do, they may need to treat you well. How to you? What do you do to them? And that, that a new Piku said, Oh, Pante, I will be happy. It's better than they hit me with claw. They say harsh word, it's okay. I can live with that. And mm -hmm. they continue you know, until, uh, and then the word said, well, if they hit you with a claw, with a stick, what do you think? It's better than they hit me if I shed my blood out. And I will say, okay, it's better than that, he said. And I will say, oh, if they hit you with an object and you bleed, what do you do? And that book, that book, that, that book said, it will be better if they don't kill me because you know, share some blood is okay. It isn't that big deal. And until all the way up to if they kill you, and they would kill what you do. Well, that Poku said there are many monks in the Buddha time that they kill themselves because they this the Asupaka Matana and they hate themselves. They had to live. They hate, they don't want to live. And they kill themselves. And then said, okay, it's better because I don't have to kill myself because I will die anyway. And they would have said, okay, Piku, you can go there. You can live there and you stay there. And I would like to have the uh, Pante Piku Poti to give more uh, elaborate story on this, uh, on this uh, Piku. I don't remember exactly, but I wanted to praise the effort of Pante Putarkita that he had done for those mm. people. I am very mm. touched very, with your effort, Pante. Very, very touched because I came from poor country too. I came from Laos. Mm. And, and, and I, I share the difficulty of 
poor people. Mm. And I know firsthand. And when I, I heard you said that those people, when they see you, they call like evil people and so on. It reminds me of that, that uh, Piku. Mm. And you are truly the Piku who walk <clears throat> behind the wood teaching. I admire you, people. Thank from you. my mother of the heart, yes, that what you did is very good, but they keep on. Thank you. Much support. Thank, thank you very much. I've been to Laos and all these things. <laughs> so, thank, you very much. thank you very much. I really appreciate And uh, yes, uh, I'm very grateful. Yes. So, so another question. I think somebody also asked a question in the chat here. Somebody asked a question in the chat here. Uh, do you face challenges from the government? Uh, no, I have no challenge from the government. That's the answer to your question. It's in the chat. Greeting, Bante Buddha Director. Thank you for your spreading your beauty. Do you face any challenges from the government? The answer is no. I faced the challenge from the, the government at the very beginning when I went to register the organization. Once I was taking my file, the official who is supposed to register the organization ran away from his desk, from her desk, sorry. And say, wow, I, 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 the desk, it was empty. And then she came back. I said, why are you running? She said, I thought you're a witch doctor. <laughs> so so I, 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 it delayed for me to register the organization as a non-profit non organization because every time I, I, I was attempting to do that, I faced challenges. One time I was registering the organization, they asked me, what are your principles? I said, oh, we, we, we keep five precepts and eight precepts and say, what are the precepts? I say, not killing uh, is the first precept. They say, no, we're not going to register your organization. You mean you can't defend, defend yourself? <laughs> what if people come and attack you? <laughs> so I've passed that like any other uh, challenges in life. There's a saying by Mahatma Gandhi, the first time people ignore you, the second time people laugh at you, the third time people fight you, the fourth time people join you. I think I've gone through all that stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. I have no challenges. Yeah. Okay, another question. I think I see Kim. Yeah, it's from Kim. I see Kim Sanders. Mm. Bante, you are doing so much good work to set up the UBC Center as well as the wonderful programs there. Um, and we're so happy Buddhist Global Relief are there to support your wonderful work. Thank you, Bante. And I just have a question. Um, have you started the fundraising for the new school? And, um, and what are your plans about that? The new school that basically you, you were showing at the end? The, 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 is that the middle school. school, the middle school? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Kim and Bante Body and uh, all the listeners. Actually, I started the fundraising of the school, but the COVID affected it. So mm -hmm. we could only buy the container from the donor, the container for keeping things. And then we, 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 we started bricks, uh, laying the bricks to make the construction cheaper. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID, we lost uh, our potential donors. At the moment, no. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, they had some financial issues throughout, throughout the COVID. And uh, then uh, at the moment, we, we don't have funding uh, at the, available to construct. Though the, the plans have been approved by the government, mm. but now we, we don't have the funding to construct it. So within a, a year, our children will graduate from primary school, but they have nowhere to go. And mm. I don't want them to go to other schools because they're novice monks, most of them. So yes, uh, uh, Kim, uh, we are trying to fundraise for that. Uh, I think we could help with that. The Buddhist Global Relief will help with that. Oh, sadu, sadu, sadu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a very, very worthy project to support. Yeah, yeah. Sadu, 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 sadu. So Bante, these children will be graduating. This is their last year starting in 2023 or starting in are they graduating in 2023? Yeah, by, by the end, yeah, by the end of 2023, the first batch, which is primary seven, 
they will, they will they will have to go to high school senior one and that time uh we won't have the uh, at the moment we don't have the high school to go to so that's what means we have a year to do this actually to make sure that once they graduate at least they can go to to the to high school, which is our high school, other than sending them to other schools where the challenge is about eating at the right time and you know, getting proper education and all that. So that's, we have a time like one, one year from now, because that's the first time now we're going to have our, our student go to primary seven and sit the examination. So yes, towards the end of the year, to 2023, that's when we have to figure out this. Mm -hmm. and, and typically, Bante, how long does it take to build the school? It let, it, let's say if you get the funding from uh, uh, from donors, how long does it take to build the school, to finish building the school? Uh, minimum six months to eight months like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, like uh, because we have got approvals already from the government, it's really actually one. And also we got the contract already. So really, uh, as, as, as soon as we get the funding, it will take uh, mm -hmm. the first phase, of course, we are going to phase it out. So the mm -hmm. first phase will take definitely six to eight mm -hmm. months. Yeah. 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 Like, I think you could send a proposal to BGR right away, and then we can even expedite a, a meeting to discuss it right away. OK. Sadu, sadu. Thank you so yeah. much, Bante. Yeah. Yeah. Sadu, sadu, sadu. OK, let's see if we have um Shyamali's hand is still up is that just from the previous question but let's take David David has David Broughton <clears throat> has his hand up yes Bante um Bante Budarikita um so <laughs> I just wanted to ask the question of how much because I you know I, I I'm always impressed by how little it takes to do so much and you know what what kind of dollars are you in need of in order to complete this school uh the us dollars it's in uganda shillings i need to convert the current range uh, because uh, it was quoted in a in a, in uganda shillings a, a long time ago a while ago so i need to look at it and do the conversion and then i'll share with you okay who's Thank asking you. this question by the way who's asking this question david who yeah, David. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, David. Yeah, David. David is the vice chair of Buddhist Global Relief. So, oh, David. David, <laughs> I, I've been, I've been in, in, in touch with you because I have your contacts. Then I will share with the BGR. Yeah, because okay. I, I need to convert that. Uh, the, the last time they quoted it, I need to convert it. Yes. Thank you, Monte. Yes. And I will share with that as soon as possible. Yeah, because what happened is. Um, when they quoted it, it's just been a while, uh, and the th materials have uh, uh, increased, and all the things uh, in yeah, terms. No. Yeah, so I need to get the contractor to put a certain percentage to reflect what has been uh, in store for the last one year. So I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. David. Okay. Shamali, did you have another question? Okay, then you unmute. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did have another question, uh, Bante. Uh, I want to ask you, you mentioned about the volunteer opportunities and if you can mention that to anyone who is interested in this uh, group uh, as to what kind of volunteer opportunities are there, as well as if any, anybody wanted to see the center, whether they could come or, you know, people may be interested in things like that. And yeah, I don't know whether you know all these details by now, or if you did know, please share that with everybody. Thank you. Yes, I will share actually from time to time people come. Even now, I left uh, two English people. One is our architect, another one is a teacher. So people, Dolores came to Uganda Boot Center and really uh, did wonderful things to upgrade our guest guest house. So you are, you are welcome. And we're waiting for B Bante Bodhi to come to Uganda and see firsthand what we are doing. You are welcome, all of you, you are welcome to come to Uganda Buddhist Center, to volunteer. We have people been coming actually uh, from time to time to Uganda Buddhist Center. We need more teachers, more volunteers. Any length of time, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. 
just let me know. You have my email, mm. just let me know when you want to come. Yes. So, <laughs> so that I'm not in yes when you're there. I want to welcome you. <laughs> just keep in touch. And also another thing I need to mention is that uh, we want to replicate this in different African countries, actually. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's why when we are training these novice nuns and monks, this is Uganda Buddha Center as a model. Mm -hmm. Africa has 54 mm -hmm. countries. So this really shows the, the work which is lying ahead of us. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying ahead of me, ahead of us, really, all of us. This work mm -hmm. in Africa, when I looked at the 200, 600 years, you know, 200, I mean, 2,600 years, and I traveled a little bit around the country, the world, I found out the, the continent Africa is lacking on this teaching that is very transforming, mm -hmm. tra transformative, because it transformed me. I wasn't born as a monk, yeah. it's not obvious. I wasn't, I wasn't born as a Buddhist, yes. <laughs> but really when I became a Buddhist and uh, I, I became a monk and I, I introduced this teaching, they transformed me and I can see what I'm doing to transform others. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is just a beginning of what we are doing in Africa. If mm -hmm. we can replicate it in other African countries, and the good news is that BGR is still having a footing in different countries, like, like in Niger and all these countries. I know for, from first ex hand experience how African tell me that we are really benefiting from this teaching, really, mm -hmm. those who are suffering. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much uh, again. Yeah. Yeah. You you have another sort of senior monk with you, I see in the in the photographs. His name is Sangharakita. Yes, he's my he, student. He's only six years as, as a monk. Is he Ugandan or from another country? Ugandan. Oh, he's Ugandan too. Yes, he's like six years was I, I we ordained him in Uganda when I created the Sima there. Yeah. yeah. And if you could get some monks maybe from Kenya or Malawi, they, neighboring countries and Yes, get them trained, and then they could go back to to those countries. Yes, very well. Actually, uh, that's uh, uh, thank you very much for your encouragement. Uh, yeah. we, we'll do that. Yeah, I see that our mutual friend Dolores Watson is on the participant list, and she spent quite a lot of time at your Uganda Center. Maybe would. If she would like to unmute and maybe just for a few minutes speak about some of her impressions. Yes, yes. I tried to look for her, but I couldn't see She's her. there. She's, I see the name is there. Yeah. In the morning, I, sh I saw her, but in the afternoon, I looked, I couldn't see her. She's no. the one to really tell us how things are going. She really w did a wonderful job to really uh, support us and the, the guest wing and all look. She has a Midas touch, really. So when you come, you stay what uh, in a guest house we, what that supported my mother's house and many things she's wonderful oh dolores must have left I don't oh, know. I... no i'm here oh thank you I'm, I'm here my my video is not working so i can't i see i see okay. thing, but i enjoyed the um the program this morning and of course abante buddha rakita I love Uganda. I love your center. And it's just an amazing place. It really is. I encourage all of you to come and visit and volunteer and Bhikkhu Bodhi. I might have to come to New York and get you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I seriously hope that you will come as well. It's an amazing place. Uh, the the staff and the people and the children are just amazing. I I, mm. I was there for a month, and then three years ago I was there for a month. I was there in October, this past October for a month, and then three years ago I was there for a month, and it's just a life transforming experience to be at with Bante Buddha Rakita. I'm I'm speechless, really. So um, the the work uh, that you're doing there, the free school is amazing. I had so much fun telling stories 
to the young children and teaching them uh, meditation, sitting meditation and walking meditation. I had so much fun with them mm -hmm. and it's just an amazing place. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Dolores. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Doris. Thank you. Okay, we just have three minutes. I think what we should do, you know, we've done metta already. I think we should do a little meditation of mudita, which is rejoicing in the good of others. So we could rejoice in the, I say, the extremely impressive, momentous work that Bhante Buddha Rakita has been doing. So you could just, you know, sit quietly, first settle the mind a little bit by focusing on the breath. And then you bring to mind the various projects, the Dhamma work, the social service work that Bhante Buddharakita has been engaged in, in Uganda, and hopefully in other countries in Africa. And then just you let joy arise in the heart. You just keep on turning the mind back to those accomplishments and then let the joy just get stronger and stronger until it can suffuse the entire body and mind. I think not only of the work that Bhante Buddharakita is doing, but also you could think of the children who have the opportunity to attend school and the children from the orphanage who are receiving two meals a day and then rejoice in their good fortune. Okay, you can take a deep breath in and out, in and out, and then we'll end the afternoon program with the sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> okay, and then I think Kim, you close us off for the afternoon. Yes, Bhante. Thank you so much, Bhante Bodhi and Bhante Buddha Rakita for the wonderful afternoon session. Um, I think we're heading into the a break now. Uh, we will resume the retreat for this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much.
Sadhu, thank you. Sadhu, 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 Sadh